Alright, welcome back y'all. I'm Danny Boone at Dutch Day TV. Today we got this 2005 Kawasaki Prairie 360 in here. Belongs to the boss man's cousin. Be my second cousin. Her first, her, her name's Teresa. So, Teresa picked this thing up 350 bucks and it runs great. Other than she smokes like a freight train. So we're going to show y'all the easiest way to overhaul the shop into that motor. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the seat. You got to get the seat out of the way. This gas tank plastic is going to have to come out of the way. And the gas tank. You remove those two bolts right there. Take your gas cap off. Usually there's two Phillips head screws right there. One here and one there. Which the dude that had this before put a big old bolt in there because I guess he lost the metal bracket that that screw goes into but get your tank plastic off of there get your tank off of there then there's a few more plastic pieces down underneath here we'll show y'all how to get off another thing i forgot to mention about getting this tank plastic off is this thing has to come off Got a, it's got a nut on the bottom side there. It's at 12 millimeter, I believe. And then you back that nut off, and then the whole knob will unscrew itself. Alright, so to get this piece off right here you got one right there you got uh, well, I don't know if y'all can see that or not right there, there it is sorry didn't mean to turn y'all sideways you got one right there there is a couple probably going to be underneath the fender right here yep underneath the fender there it's going to be dark under there though Underneath the fender, there's two more of them Phillips head screws. And that black plastic piece will come off. Then to get the tank off, you're going to have to be sure you turn your gas valve off before you undo the Phillips head screw that's inside there. That gets that piece out of your way. And before you go trying to remove it, make sure you undo your gas line from your carburetor. Alright, so I got the plastics off the around the tank, got the tank off there. Underneath that tank was a, was a rubber mat type piece underneath there to keep the heat off the motor from hitting the tank, heating the gas so much. But now that I got all that off of there, the bracket over at the top of the engine, it's got two twelves on that side and two twelves on that side and underneath down there there is a bolt going through the top of the cylinder head there pull that bolt out those four bolts right there on the sides and that bracket will come up out your way now this way we won't have to pull the entire motor out of the frame once I get that bracket out of the way I'll disconnect my carburetor I'll disconnect my exhaust down there and I'll get ready to start pulling that head off of there and show y'all the procedure how to do that.
All right, so I got the carburetor off there. I got that motor mount bracket out of the way. The coil also attaches to that motor mount bracket, so you'll have to undo the coil from the spark plug and undo those two wires right there from the coil. And then that whole bracket will come out of the way. Got the carburetor off of there. I just set it over there to the side. I got the exhaust off of there. Undone the two exhaust bolts on the cylinder head. Undone the two exhaust bolts underneath there that hold that muffler to the frame and it just slid right off. Now, to get the cylinder head off of there, we're gonna wanna take this cap off. It's two eight millimeter bolts. There's another one on the bottom side down there just like it. We're gonna wanna take that cap off, that cap off, then we're going to come over here on the side and we're going to want to take this cap off. It goes over the side of the head and covers the cam. And we're going to take the, those three off. Then there's this plug right down here. We're going to unscrew out the flathead screwdriver and we're going to line our timing marks up. And then we'll show y'all how to pull this cylinder head off. It's held down by that one, that one, two more just like it on the bottom side, and these two tins right here on the side of the cylinder head. We'll get to that in just a minute though. All right, so with all your covers off, I've got a timing mark right here. It's a line. It lines up with that notch right there on the outside of the cylinder head casing. That's the timing mark to line the cam up. Then I don't know if you're going to be able to see this one or not, but off in that hole right there, is a line with a T on it. Try to get y'all in there as best I can. There's a line with a T. And that means top dead center. Now that you got your timing marks lined up, you can go back up here and you can remove your timing chain tensioner. And held in by those two 10 millimeter bolts. And that takes your tension off your timing chain then you're not going to want to let your timing chain fall down in sorry about that cut the camera off but you're not going to want to let that timing chain fall down into the motor so when you get the tension loose on it what you're going to want to do is take you a little wire wrap it around the top of your chain and then take your wire and wrap it around the frame right here that way your chain don't fall down into the motor and then whenever we get to pulling that cylinder head off of there, you can undo your wire from the frame, hold your wire, that way your frame, that way your uh, chain don't fall down into the engine there. Once you get the cylinder head off of there and the chain free and clear, you can tie it back up around the frame there. Now, I'm going to work on doing all that. I believe these are going to be 14 or 15 millimeter sockets that fit those bolts there there's four of them i'll remove those after i get the tension off of that chain and get the chain wired up out of the way and start pulling that cylinder head off of there sorry y'all apparently my camera wasn't rolling whenever i was removing the cylinder head but um there's also a oil feed line that goes up to the top of the cylinder head and it bolts on by an 8 millimeter bolt. When the cylinder head's on there, it'll be right beside the cam. Let me show y'all right quick. See, it goes right in 
that hole right there and it bolts right there I thought the camera was rolling when I was doing this part but it wasn't so when the cylinder head's on there you're gonna want to remove your eight millimeter bolt from right there and be very very careful just like that chain you don't want it falling down into that case because if it does that's where things are gonna get fun but get your eight millimeter bolt out of there take you a pair of needle nose pliers and grab right here you might also have to grab this thing a couple times but just work it loose don't grab too hard just grab gently and work its way out of there that spool line has to come off for the cylinder head to come off sorry about that there's also a third 10 millimeter bolt right there it'll be up to the top on the side so with the cylinder head off that wraps up part one keep an eye out for part two we're going to show you how to swap out some valve guide seals in that cylinder head right there then we're going to show you how to put some piston rings on there and put this beast back together hit that thumbs up if y'all like this video subscribe for notifications for part two and we'll see y'all here in just a little while